I really feel confident. It's a painful, it is a painful training camp. It's not for the faint hearted. It's just so hard, it is. <sighs> fucking hard. You know, fucking young man's going, and it's to the old cunts who used to do this. I'm one of them, fucking fool. The this is a big question. Have I made the fatal move of coming back one last time? Too late. You had the warrior gene bred into you. Yeah, I mean, but, but on my mum's side, um, you know, it was a serious fight. As on my dad's side, the serious fighters. But I wasn't a fighter. I was a, a nice little boy, and I think it stayed with me as my adult. But lurking somewhere in the midst of me, I was a fighter. But it took something to bring it out. I went for the door, and my dad went, grabbed me back. Where are you going? I'm going out to play. He went, yeah. And if you go out to play, what will happen? you'll get clumped again, and you'll come back crying again. And I went, no I won't. He said, what do you mean no I won't? I said, watch, and it back, watch. It was almost like clockwork. Went into the field to play, and then my cousin went, just to go, and I went, boom, bash, have that. No, it didn't knock him back, it didn't knock him down, it didn't send him into tears. It made for a Joe Frazier, Harley, perfect two kids matched. Two heavy kids, he's four months older than me, tiniest bit bigger maybe, but two heavy fat boys that then we used to spar in the same gym, so we'd spar together and we'd knuckle fight by day, and we, we had a knuckle fight that would probably be deemed as brutal now by, by modern standards, but we, we had a knuckle fight uh, hedged on by adults, or oh, yeah. appreciate sure, nine, ten year old, nine, oh, ten year old, God. and we, we had a knuckle fight that lasted over half an hour. It busted nose, lips, had black eyes. A ten year old, yeah, we were eight stone each. That's the size of a small man. No gloves. It was under this behave yourself, lads, have a sweet, shake hands, forget about it. And we were at it, and the only thing that stopped that fight was daylight. My mum had called me to bed, I was nine, ten year old. My mum called me, I had to go. I went to go, one of my cousins said he's had enough, then my uncle then comes out and goes, absolutely mad, what the fuck do you mean he's had a fuck enough? Don't you fucking. Anyway, so now, now it looks like I'm becoming an almost an adult realm. He said, Mum's calling to bed. He's ten year old, he's got to go to bed, it's dark. We'll fight again tomorrow. When we press the go button and we're going, I think it's an absolutely wonderful buzz. I think it's a great adrenaline. I think it's second to nothing. Mm. The adrenaline of having a straight man and some blood's coming from you and you're in you're into it and you're perspirating a bit mm. and there's no way back. What a great buzz. And what's your record, Joe, in those four years? I'm beaten. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm going 
the one I've got to tell. You've got your mind, you got your will, to you come to bear the feel. These are all the things you'll ever need.
Would you ever fight again? I know it won't be a popular question with some of your family members. Um, would I ever fight again? I hope not. And when I say hope not, um, I like to think I'm a man of fairness, of love. I have children with impeccably good manners. Um, I don't take drugs. I'm not a violent drunk. So I'm looking at all costs not to get in trouble. If somebody wanted to, um, if somebody wanted to, uh, do their worst on a man that wants to give them love and friendship, I will do my very best to defend myself. But beyond that, no, I won't fight again. And the winner of the 2019 Middlesex Mid-Amateur Championship with scores of 69, 75 from White Green, Joe Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Myself, when I break parts, still break noses. <laughs> Get in there. Hey. I've got to confess, I cheated today. <laughs> I, I had 15 clubs in my bag, and, and that 15th club is a young man who's extremely unwell, Charlie Crosby. Oh. So I won for him today. Charlie, this is for you and your lovely parents, Carol and me. God bless you, son. I hope you get well soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Keith Pelly, the CEO of the European Tour, very kindly got in touch and invited us over here because of um, my son Charlie, uh, who is a very talented golfer and all-round sportsman. And unfortunately, in um, June 2019, he had a brain hemorrhage. He's got a lot of uh, disability down his right side and he has problems speaking. But um, he's recovering and this is great for him. And uh, that's basically why we're here to give him a boost. <laughs> he's, he's, he's unbelievable. Yeah, Every time everyone hits a bad shot, yeah, he comes up drunk. Honestly, oh, he's a uh, famous last words. Oh, good luck. Yeah. Cheers. Good seeing you. Thank you. Our dream is to get him back playing golf. That's our ultimate goal. Um, when things were really bad, when it first happened, um, we were told to plan for the worst. We didn't know if he was going to pull through. Um, thankfully, um, a lot of European Tour players um, are responsible for him coming out of his coma that he was in for six weeks with messages of support and um, it's just made such a difference for us. We would play um, video clips on our phones to him while he was in the coma and um, we started to see a reaction and it was just amazing really, just a little blink of the eye, um, expressions in his face and that was everything to us, it, it just gave us hope. And uh, they kept coming, these videos, and we kept playing them, and he kept improving. So my wife and I, we're just, we're convinced that that's a massive part of why he came out of the coma and he's made such a great recovery. Oh, <laughs> it's a very rare thing that's happened to him, but weirdly, it does tend to happen to young men. Um, in particular, um, it's uh, it's called an AVM. Um, you don't know you've got it unless it ruptures. Yeah. So it's like a ticking time bomb. You just don't know, mm -hmm. and it seem, seems to happen to um, particularly fit young men as well. So it's very it's very cruel. Mm -hmm. And if, the more I can get the message out there and get support for Charlie and other people like Charlie, the better really. This today is fantastic for him to come on um, <laughs> the Prime Day as well where everyone's so friendly and the weather's amazing beautiful setting i mean he's he's having the time of his life so i thank everyone on the european tour for inviting us up here brilliant 
<laughs> yes, I did say um, I would never box again. It's just over a year's past now. I told a journalist, Christian Morgans, who made a documentary on me called It's in the Blood, a documentary I enjoyed making with him. Um, and I did say that um, I wouldn't fight again. And uh, but what I did say also, I said I'd only ever fight for charity again. And I am a man to my word. And I also said that I wouldn't fight unless I made my fight weight. Because I couldn't do it at 30 something very good and um, if I went heavier. Uh, what's changed? Um, yeah, my body got battered some with COVID. Um, people were telling me that, uh, you know, put on weight, it's age, it can't be done, and it just kept sort of making a challenge. Back of my mind was, uh, what, what has COVID done to my body? Uh, has it completely stripped me of any, um, you know, of my best years? Has it, has it battered me? Um, I did have it quite severe, you know, I was in hospital for a week with, with, on oxygen with double pneumonia. A, a doctor told me my lungs were in a mess. So all of this coupled, it become a challenge. I got very unfit last year for my normality. Um, I was away for a couple of months on all of the um, camping in my motorhome. And um, yeah, so I, I just sort of come in all these things. You can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. Sort of very um, and I did actually once say that the only time I fight again is for charity. So let's get it right. I'm fighting for charity, but it's a serious fight. There's no um, exhibition tap around. It's just a serious fight. And I did say back some six months ago that I will, um, I will fight again. It's gone a bit quiet because I've been training six days a week. And um, originally I was meant to be doing it in December, but not anymore. Um, that one. I couldn't get ready in time for that by my own admissions um, and the opponent that potentially wanted to box didn't want to. So here I am, um, I'm out now with a fellow from the north uh, west of the country, Jimmy Papa, taking me on and all the proceeds, every, you know, fighters are getting paid, away fighters, etc, etc, all the own fighters are doing it for young Charlie Crosby, my good friend, who I would vow and continue to raise money for until we can get him into a rehabilitation as sort of he's surpassed it and he doesn't need any more he's self-sufficient he had a brain hemorrhage charlie 22 years of age uh, he's now 26 27 actually as i speak today so that's it so um you know all the hard work dedication it's a painful it is a painful training camp it's not for the faint hearted just the diet alone is not for the Faint art. If my weight is going good, I actually weighed in today, so the lightest I've probably been in about 15 years. Um, I'm 103 and a half kilos. I used to fight at 102 kilos. Um, I think the lightest I've ever fought at is 100 kilos, and I'm 103 and a half. So I'm nearing towards peak and weight. There's a few things that let me down um, elbow injury. Um, so I'm having to do some touch barring, it's difficult to explain, we call it Cuban touch barring. But I'm just trying as hard as I possibly can with the body I have. And um, keeping in mind that Charlie's my driven motivation. And uh, that's about it, that's where we're at really. Um, just sort of day by day, less than three weeks to go now and um, still a lot more work to be done, still a lot more work in three weeks. We've got to wind down a few days before to get the rest, but we're soon going into speed, we're cutting the last bit of weight, we're going into speed, 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 art rate, art rate. It's punishing on a 52 year old body, almost 52, when I fight I'll be three months short of 52. It's punishing, it's punishing on a young body, I'm in camp with two young guys, and um, it's hard work, but if you don't put that hard work in, you won't get it out. And I really don't care what happens on the night, in the sense that I do care that we're all safe, all boxers are safe, that I'm praying for. If I don't win or perform, I have a perfectly good excuse. It's age. But lurking beyond me, lurking beyond that, is a man that's just as ambitious as ever. I want to get down there, there's a side of me that's extremely confident, that won't be revealed on the night to anybody. 
This will be revealed in this documentary that will not be revealed to any person, crowd, ticket buyer, opponent, yes? This is why this documentary is released. None of the footage on my training is coming in. Yeah, because opponents get it now. This is a game of chess. This is a game of warrior v warrior. This is a game of ta tactics. This is a game of everything. All I have to do is beat my opponent. All he has to do is beat me. So I'm giving nothing away. I can tell you now because I know this documentary is gonna be aired on the night of the fight, just an hour after the fight. So it's too late to gain anything, but it'll make for good TV and good watching, hopefully. But um, yeah. Absolutely, all of these things. So I'm taking some gambles, not sparring, doing a touch sparring, but the rest of it, push my body hard, as hard as I can. I really feel confident. I'm convinced I will beat Timmy Papa. I give him all the credit in the world for him. He's a slightly smaller heavyweight than me. He's a former light heavyweight, gone up to sort of small heavyweight, 14 stone, and his age is 39, he's quite a bit younger than me, he's a good fighter, I think he's a good warrior on the unlicensed scene, good, good, tough man, and that I expect, but this is the danger I have, this is the big danger, it's the fighter who thinks he can still do it, people around me have told me, have I, this is the big question, have I made the fatal move of coming back one last time too late, yeah? Have I done that? I believe in my mind, that, that might be the case, but I believe in my mind and mind and art of arts, the whole will go out there and I will perform, and I'll perform like a young man, and I will box him, craft him, be too strong for him, too good for him, too clever for him, but I couldn't ask for a better opponent to test me because he keeps working and his game as, yes, I'm nearly swallowed, his game as you like. So um, I'll keep you posted, but uh, am I looking forward to the challenge? I've worked so hard, I'll tell you right here, right now. Um, ask my family, ask my wife, ask anybody. They will tell you how hard I've worked, how hard I've dieted, um, how hard I've trained to the best I can. And if I did do well, nobody would deny me that, even myself. People say I'm a little bit modest, but I tell you, if I do pull it off, I'll be very, very proud of myself because I have worked my Niagara Falls off. Uh, keep watching. We're going to bring you right up to speed with the training camp, the weight, um, everything. Um, the injuries and niggles and not niggles, the way we're going. And um, we're going to bring you right up to such stage where we're going to leave you hanging in the balance. All will be revealed except from the fight, which will be in part two of this documentary. But um, there's a title fight, um, a Masters, over 35 year old Masters title of some description. Um, and it's, it's a bit of a sprint. Um, it's three or four two minute rounds, we're not sure yet, but it sounds Sounds like three two minute rounds are just three two minute rounds. Trust me, go to watch a boxing match. Go and see two 16 year olds or 14 year olds respectively do three two minute rounds and watch how, how they're puffing and nothing because it's a sprint. You imagine a 400 meter runner? Yes, he just goes out, El Galactic ass is going, he's only gone 400 meters and you'd naturally think the 26 miles is the easier one. How many big sort of only semi, semi sort of in position people do you see complete the marathon? You don't see many 400 people just bouncing around that track because it's this is a sprint and trust me, I could fight on the cobbles. I've done 43 minutes here before, no trouble at all. Higher, fuller stamina, hock and slower fight down, and and eight three minute rounds, ten three minute rounds. I'll spar up with my lads, it ain't a problem. But three twos in its own way is every bit as hard. So it's imperative I get out there, get your speed going, bum, 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 bang. Strike first, get a lead in the first round, get a lead in the second round, you have the comfort of holding on if you want. But yes, yeah, I'm figuring knockout, I'm not interested in knockout, I'm interested in this W, win only. That's how hard it is. <sighs> fucking hard. You know, fucking young man's game. <sighs> fucking young man's game. And it's to the old cunts used to do this. I'm one of them. Fucking fall. So, week one, 
112.4. I went at 14.9. It's two and a half kg loss. I'm very, very happy with that. Um, it, you lose more in the first week, but I was disciplined. I was consistent. And um, the first road to a potential comeback or at least the weight loss. Um, so follow the journey. I'm happy with that. Two and a half kg and um, thumbs up. Hundred eleven point eight. One oh nine three. Okay, so uh, as you can just see, the scale is one oh point nine three. So I'm absolutely thrilled with that. That is two and a half kg, that is 11. Joe Bugner Smith scales, 108.5 kg. I've got to get off six and a half at least to keep the comeback up. Eight kg. Um, if I'd been running to speed, I'd have lost seven and a half, I'd lost six, but I've had a couple of few weeks. Um, the jet lag, as explained, and a short week, and I went to have a day of training and some rest because of gout. It's not injury, it goes around the body. So, Joe Bunker Smith weighs 108 kg, six down, six to go, still on the road. Old, but not totally cold. Keep going. Yeah, looking at a date in March, not confirmed. Uh, just had my blood test, which I promised myself I'd do in the brain scan. My blood test has come back good. Um, it's now a brain scan, and that comes back good. I owe that much to my family. I'm not a scaredy cat or anything like that, but I think it's being wise and sensible. Professional boxers have to wear brain scans. Why can't an unlicensed one have one? So I'm taking a brain scan. If that's good, I will start sparring. Another week of work and camp and it's weigh-in day before we ever treat. And we're all a bit nervous, this is what we are. We've worked hard, we've trained hard. Let's we'll see what happens, the scales don't lie. You know him a shed, half a kilo. So well done. Miss that. You've lost over a kilo. 105.9, I'm happy with that. Um, it's a kilo of two and a half kilos. I'm on target. I'm down to just under 106. I'm always getting a full supply of weights like this. 116. That is the same so weight. We're uh, two weeks, six days before the fight. We have three more weigh-ins, yeah. Um, and a lot of people will think, well, what's the big weight issue? We're all in the heavyweight division, all the three boys in camp. Um, but for me, I don't know if you historically heard, I said I vowed to make my old fight weight, or else I wouldn't fight, because I, I did struggle to get every weight around the ring in my 30s, and now I'm in my 50s. It's been a, this is a really serious, important part of what we're doing. I'm coming up to 52, and the other boys are following the same regime. It's not alone, but I'm a grandfather of 52, and I've had no milk in my tea. Um, this is what happens in camp. No fizzy pops or drinks, even the sugar-free ones. No fruit juices, none of that. Just been water and tea. Um, and a strict, strict diet. It's punishing, that alone is punishing. So the scales were going on. Weight's coming down, but it's a struggle, but the scales will tell a story. And first on board is Jamie um, going on. And Jamie, I see you going, he went 116 last week. Right, the scales, I see how we're doing. <laughs> 
See what happened, um, to Jamie, if you come and have a little video here, he's actually lost, some weeks you miss, he, he, he went, he's actually lost 5 kg in a week, <laughs> the fat burning, which in all honesty is brilliant, but it's too heavy. But what did happen last week? You <laughs> spent mate it and missed a week, and your body can go up a bit, down a bit. Right, next on is Rhyma. Rhyma weighed in last week at 105. 104 and a half. 104 and a half. And here he goes this week, let's see what's happened. And he's 102 and a half. Have a look at this. 102 and a half, and that's a fantastic weight loss. That's a perfect weight loss. But as I'm older, things struggle for me. I was on the scale last week at 106 kg, and I'm going to make 102. And um, I'm one of them body types that, even in my prime best, I always carry fat, like a, a, a bit of a Tyson Fury or a bit of a um, Andy Ruiz. They just would not come down. But there I am, look. This is doing my best. Let's see what it is today. The scales do not lie. What was you on last week? 106. And today, Joe Bud the Smith scales. 103.6. Can you see that? 103.6. I've got boxes on. If I, if I took my boxes off, I'd be 103.5. I'm one and a half kg away from flight weight, which I achieved 20 years ago after 12 weeks in camp. So what you see here. It's just what it is. I'm working so hard to get it down, but the boys have done brilliant. And um, why do we have to make this weight? It's a setup. You've got to perform. Why are we working this strict? Just three two-minute rounds. Trust me, three two-minute rounds is not much different from eight threes. Trust me, you can slow things up, move around eight threes. It's a sprint. We've got to perform. It's what we're doing. So um, well done, boys. Come on, boys. <laughs>
Ryan, um, I tried to make 102, 103.3 last week. I've done my work, but it's slowed. I felt I'm gonna make 102 to 20, 20 year ago fight weight. But all will be revealed, here we go. Something's happened to my scale. Recalculated. Here we go. One oh two point six with my boxers on. I might take a wee and reweigh. But that's it. Joe Bugner Smith scales hundred and two point kilo, sixteen stone one pound. Not a bad effort, one pound over my fight weight from 20 years ago. So, two days before the fight, what are the final preparations? How are you feeling? Uh, at the moment, not good. Heavy cold, chest cold, just trying to sleep and rest it off. In and out of hot gyms, hot sweaty gyms coming in from really hot temperatures, burning fat and going to wait while the cold gym's coming out, sweating. Um, as your body gets fitter, it's, it's less horrible than common colds and stuff. And I've had two had a heavy cold two weeks ago now, another one. So as we speak, not good. But now the right, just a ch change of diet, all the training's gone, wind down, lots of sleep, lots of rest, trying to get rid of the heavy cold. Don't feel good today, but I want to be good today, I want to be good two days time, in about 44 hours. So what's the plan for Saturday, uh, for tomorrow? The more and more rest, just keep resting, maybe have a stretch. Just, feel just, ready? Just, huh? Do you feel ready? No, not at the moment, I want to feel ready on the day, okay? So uh, now I've got this heavy chest cold, but it's a little bit better, I need sleep and rest, so I'm just going to finish this quick interview and then go get some rest and because um, today don't matter nothing, tomorrow don't matter nothing. It matters that you keep well but it don't matter anything in terms of fighting performance, got to be right in the day. Yeah so just thanks for the fans that supported me from behind the scenes and I haven't put too much footage up because um, I didn't want to put footage up. My opponent becomes this more serious now. This is, this is my heavyweight championship of the world. This is serious stuff. Um, I, I don't put no footage up. When my opponent starts seeing my inside training camp. I don't want that to happen. You know what I'm saying? So this documentary has been made without any footage, like pre-show, obviously. Um, yeah, see what I'm saying? So um, and plus the fact that through injury I, I couldn't spar with a lot of touch sparring, but um, it's now serious business. All my secrets and trades and, and traits and knowledge is all going to be waiting for the night, not giving anything away, nothing, can't, can't give anything away, giving it that much advantage away could be the difference of losing. I have tried, I can honestly say, when I was 30 year old, I would try and train very hard, and I would train much harder than I am now, but in terms of effort for my body and its age, I've tried every bit as hard for this fight, yeah, Every bit as hard as I have for any other fight. Every bit, if not harder. I've tried every trick in the book. That might not only be 50% of what I used to be able to do, but I have tinkering, tampering, forever adjusting, move this, can't do that tonight, I mean you don't do this, can't spar tonight, do this, get some treatment after this, six days a week. I'm open that my old body is so, so tired and this cold, I just really in need of some rest and I'm taking it. I'm gonna finish this interview, I'm gonna get to bed early and I'm gonna lay in and lay in and get to bed early again the next day. And if I can rejuvenate my batteries, you never know, you just never know. We'll try our best. So, um, yep. Yeah. See my opponents there on Saturday. See my fans there on Saturday and let's see what happens. I'll give it my best. I am old. Am I cold? We'll find out. Am I ready for the white lock? Fuck I'm not. Nah, I'll be there. Will I be ready Saturday? Maybe. 
Watch this space. Thanks. Hi everyone. Um, I'd just like to uh, give you all a quick heartfelt thank you really to Joe and everyone else involved in um, putting tonight's event together. Also to thank each and every one of you who are here tonight. Um, Charlie's therapy is very expensive and without things like tonight and support from you lovely people, Cal and I just wouldn't be able to give Charlie the therapy that he so desperately needs. So once again, thank you so much. It's making such a huge difference for us. Hopefully you've all had a lovely evening.